This year, and honestly March in particular, seems to have so many great cozy releases. So today I want to tell you all about the cozy games on my wish list and my watch list that I've been looking out for in spring and summer or Q1 and Q2 of 2023. We have a mixture of big titles and indie gems here to discover today, so I hope you like my selection and let's just jump straight in. I'm going in order of release date and this first one is a biggie. This one comes as a prequel to the much loved Bayonetta series. Now I wouldn't class Bayonetta 1, 2 or 3 as cozy games at all. They are action games about a super sexy witch who uses her hair for magic and clothing and apparently not both at the same time. Now that's not a complaint, that's just an observation. I can't believe Nintendo bought this franchise when they are such a predominantly kid friendly company. But seeing as they are usually so kid friendly, it does make sense that this origin game is a lot more cozy and I'm really excited about it. Enter Bayonetta Origins Cereza and the Lost Demon, which is Bayonetta's origin story. In this game, she's a young witch called Cereza who seeks the power to save her imprisoned mother. To do so, she has to venture deep into a forest ruled by fairies, and this is where she meets the demon cat Cheshire. You are then able to control both characters as they explore the forest, solve puzzles, and defeat enemies. Unlike the main series, Cereza doesn't do any of the fighting, instead assisting as Cheshire takes on the enemies. However, strategy does seem to be important, so you'll need Cereza to use magic to bind certain enemies so that Cheshire can fight more effectively. Honestly, I wasn't sure about this game at first, and I haven't played any of the other Bayonetta series, but the more I found out about it, the more I am actually getting really excited for this game and really excited for its launch on March 17th. This is unfortunately a Nintendo Switch exclusive, and it is going to be at a higher price point, but the good thing is you can actually already get a demo on the Nintendo Switch store online, so at least you can check it out before you commit to spending serious amounts of money. This next game fills me with so much excitement because I love any game that has exploration and transformation, so Chia is definitely one I know I'm going to love. Chia is inspired by the beautiful island of New Caledonia and features characters that use native languages and also includes some amazing landmarks. But the world in Chia itself is entirely fictional. Still, it's really lovely to know that this beautiful game is based in reality and I would not be surprised if there is a spike in tourism because this game just looks gorgeous. The main character Chia lives on a small island with her father until he is kidnapped by a mysterious stranger and their henchmen made of fabric. Your main goal is to find and bring home your father, but there are also so many side quests and things to explore. I'm unsure how this power is introduced, but Chia also has a special ability to turn into objects and animals, meaning she can explore as a bird, a fish, a cow, a lantern, a barrel. It honestly feels so fun and creative to be able to think outside the box and honestly become the box if that's what it takes to beat a puzzle. It feels like a more friendly Breath of the Wild where you really should just go to Ganon, but also you've got time to collect hundreds of Korok seeds to exchange for a big golden poop if you want to. <laughs> I really wish this one was coming to the Switch as well, but it's being released on March 21st on the PC, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Next on my list is Atelier Riser, Alchemist of the End and The Secret Key. And that is too much of a mouthful, so from now on we're just calling it three. Urcha Gaming describes the Atelier series as comfort food, which is definitely enough to get me intrigued because I genuinely seem to love her taste in gaming. And Atelier Riser is the first of a huge Atelier series to receive a sequel and now a third entry starring the same person. Something I love about these three Atelier Riser games is that throughout the characters do age and become more adult. It's not something you see every day in games, so it's something that I really wanted to point out because these are very story heavy games. But on that note, I do want to point out that I have never played any of the Atelier series and it wasn't until Atelier Riser 3 that I even properly looked into them and therefore got excited about this game. There are over over 20 Atelier games out there and I had not bothered to know a thing about them until now. Honestly, the fan base seems to love these games enough for me to give this one a shot, but I'm finding it hard to see exactly what the story about. It seems to be that Ryza notices a new group of islands near her hometown, and once there she finds a large gate. The gate or something within the gate instructs her to reach the code of the universe. I don't know what that means. And I'm sure the universe will be at stake or something. Honestly, I'm just keen to dive into this beautiful looking world with some adventure and some action. Plus you've got a huge party of 11 people to mix and match and fight with. Now you might be in the same boat as me, wondering if you can start with Atelier Riser 3, or in general, can you start with the second or third or fourth in a series of games? Heck, there are so many Final Fantasy games out there. Like, do you start with the beginning? Do you start with seven? And honestly, my response to most of these games is if one really intrigues you and excites you, you can start there. Most of these games want to be accessible and it might be that you don't fully understand everything. And of course there will be backstories, but these games want your money and they want you to play them. and so 
though they want to be accessible, you can jump in wherever it is you want to do. For example, there are games and series that have really different gameplays in some compared to others, and if that's not up your alley, don't let that put you off playing the game that you really want to play. You can go onto YouTube, you can watch summaries of all of these games, or you can just watch the cutscenes, and I've heard especially in the Atelier series, there are a lot of cutscenes. So it can be that you just explore the previous games that way and jump straight into Atelier Riser 3. Lastly, I'll say that this game was delayed by a month, which means there could be some delays, but it's pretty unlikely at this point. They'd have probably just set a date further in the future. So Atelier Riser 3 is due to come to the PlayStation Switch and PC on March 24th. Next up is a beautiful looking indie game called Dreaming Worlds, where you get to play as a really cute red panda. Now this is not any red panda, this is a dream warden called Rin who needs to save the other wardens from a mysterious nightmare that has thrown each of the dream worlds out of balance and turned their inhabitants into stone. Rin dives into the worlds of four different dream keepers and finds out why they're not answering anymore. In each world there are mysterious places to explore, puzzles to solve and trapped inhabitants that you must rescue so you can change the dreams back to good. Dreaming Worlds looks really beautiful and casual while having a mystery which definitely puts it on my radar and I'm so ready for its release on PC on April 22nd. This next game might be the coziest post-apocalyptic survival game I have ever seen and it already has a really fun demo. This game is of course I Am Future which begins with a seagull landing on your time capsule waking you up on an abandoned rooftop that happens to be pretty well stocked for survival, if you can find the right tools. It definitely isn't all doom and gloom being the last person on earth as there is a really fun fishing mini game, salvaging mini games where you take apart old kettles and microwaves and things, don't ask me why I like that, I just do, and to top it all off you're accompanied by a talking fridge. At night though the game takes a turn for the worse as bugs invade your rooftop leaving a deadly slime in their midst. If you're clever you're able to craft items that stop them in their tracks and I like that this game does actually have punishments like if the slime gets to your crops they're infected and you have to start from scratch. The demo it definitely isn't perfect, but it does do a great job of showing how potentially amazing this game could be. There is already so much to do on this rooftop and it makes it clear that there are other areas to explore, heaps of things to craft and do, and I can see myself sinking a lot of time into this game once it's released. Which is due to be May 19th exclusively on PC, but I wouldn't be surprised if a few consoles were interested in this one too. Now this next one might be one of the more creepy cozy ones on this list and is also one that I am really excited for. Planet of Lana is from the same developers and publishers of Wavetail, a game that I have been playing on the Switch recently and really, really loving. But I would argue this game is for a slightly older audience and after playing through some of the demo, I definitely got a few Limbo vibes from it and I'll explain why soon. This game is set on a planet where humans, nature and animals used to live in harmony. However, hundreds of years of a gradually shifting imbalance suddenly resulted in the arrival of a faceless army. But this is not a story about war. This is a story about a vibrant, beautiful planet and the journey to keep it that way. When we arrive, there's a small cat-like creature that I have named Bloop and already love with all my heart. And Bloop is waking up our protagonist, Lana. The pair explore the planet's beautiful surface and honestly, their relationship is what makes the game so cozy to me. Put on top of that, the generally gorgeous world and it feels idyllic, at least for a short time. The deeper you explore, the more mysterious things you discover. There's a kind of inky web or coating to some things and sometimes those things move. Bloop is apparently the most well-behaved cat thing to have ever existed and Lana is able to tell them to sit, stay, go to certain places, bite through rope and probably a lot more as the game progresses. This mechanic is part of what makes it feel like Limbo as you work together to gain passage but there are also darker elements and specifically a robot spider that definitely help my comparison. You can also see from some of the screenshots that there is a lot of beauty and also a lot of creepy in store. Still, this game is a whole lot lighter and more beautiful than Limbo, which I think makes it more accessible to a cozy gamer. Plus, there's a gorgeous, reactive soundtrack that will either put you at ease or sometimes make the tension even worse. Planet of Lana is due to release in the second quarter of 2023 on PC and Xbox, and I highly recommend checking out the PC demo to see if this game is for you. Lakeberg Legacies is another amazing game with a demo. I checked this one out last night and boy did I get sucked in. This is a village management sim that puts a big emphasis on relationships and basically playing matchmaker to the town. Your main goal here is to build a town from the ground up, beginning with one person chopping wood, you gather enough wood to build them a house, then enough to build a farm, you bring in more people to fill positions at the farm, the mill, and so on. Building it all up until you can crown a monarch. However, the people in your village also have needs. They want a house, they want food, and most importantly, they want to find love. 
this part of the game is really what sets it apart and makes it fun for me. And there are so many things here that work together that make it really interesting. So when it comes time to play Matchmaker, you check out various things about each character to see if they're compatible, basically seeing if their likes and dislikes match up. You can also see what the new character's skills are so that when you're trying to find someone a match, you can also try to fill a role that's needed in your village. When you find a good match for a character, make sure that to note all of that matches likes and dislikes because you need to then help them navigate their first date and arrange their marriage. If you get everything right then you'll have a thriving village, but also people are not perfect and they will not always stay loyal. The two of my characters that were working together started having a fling even though on paper they were not compatible. I ended up giving them different jobs and I don't know if that stops the fling or anything, but it's those extra interactions and consequences that make the game feel really alive and really fun. It is definitely one on my list for when it comes out in Q2 of this year on PC. My one note from the demo is that I wish as the village grew I was able to zoom in and zoom out so that I could see everything at once that would have made management feel a bit more easy but it's great that you can actually pause the game at any time and you can make the speed faster if you want to but that is my one note in case anyone from the team happens to watch this video. Now I've tried to keep this list to all games that have quite solid release dates but I just have to mention this one because I love a short game and this one looks so beautiful. Way to the Woods does say that it will be releasing in March but there's no set date and I know that this game has changed a bit over time so I won't be mad if this game is delayed at all. To me it just means that they're taking the time to make a really solid game so maybe much is what we will say for now. Way to the Woods features a deer and a fawn that are journeying through an abandoned world trying to get home. This is a solo developed game that has transformed quite a bit since it was first announced, so early trailers may not truly show what this game is like. I'm really interested in seeing how the deer's antlers interact with the world as they seem to have an ability to glow and light things up. I wanted to mention it now as I may not get another chance until it's released and it's great to get the word out about these beautiful indies and solo developed games like this one. When Way to the Woods is out it will be released on PC and onto Xbox Game Pass. And that is it today friends, I feel like there are so, so many amazing games coming out this year. It seems like any games that were delayed during lockdowns are suddenly just being released this year and there are just amazing things happening across all different flavours of gaming. I hope that you liked my picks today and I would love to hear from you in the comments. What are your favourites? What are you looking forward to? Is there anything I've missed? And let's help to spread the word about more amazing indie games. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing for more cosy gaming and if you really liked it then do consider giving the like button a little tappy tap it really does help me out. Here is something else I hope you will enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye!